Hello Helpful Programmer here and in this tutorial we're going to be loading up our images into our game and adding movement and collision to player 1 and player 2. Let's open up Visual C++ and open up our project and go to our main.cpp file. Um, in the last tutorial when I was making the glasses I forgot to put a semicolon after the end of our class declaration. So go ahead and add those to our class declarations these semicolons here. OK, once we've done that, we're ready to load up our images into our game. So let's go ahead, just after the db set image color key, let's type the function db load image, open parentheses and open speech marks, and then in here, let's put background dot bmp, closing speech marks and doing a comma, and then let's put the load id, let's start off with one, closing parentheses and doing a semicolon. Now the next one, let's load up our paddle. So db load image, open parentheses, open speech marks, and in here put paddle, dot bmp, closing speech marks and doing a comma. And then let's do the next load ID along, so two, closing parentheses and doing a semicolon. Then the next one, let's load up our ball, so db load image, open parentheses speech marks ball dot bmp closing speech marks comma and then the next loads id from that so three closing parentheses and doing a semicolon and then doing exactly the same for our top and bottom line and our left and right line so i'll just do that now using number four and number five because they're the next two load ids now we've loaded everything up let's create the sprites First off, let's create the background, so using the function db sprite, open parentheses, and then in here, like in our last tools, put the sprite ID we want, so 1, comma, and then we want it to 0 pixels across and 0 pixels down. This is going to fill the whole screen. And then put the load ID, or the image ID, which is 1, so put 1 there closing parentheses and do a semicolon and then if it helps just do a comment saying background so you don't have to remember what one is all the time and then let's do the next one so this is going to be player one's paddle so db sprite two and then what i found is the best place to put player one is roughly in the middle of the screen so here at 100 pixels across and 220 pixels down. So let's go and put that into our game. 100 pixels across and 220 pixels down, comma, and then put the load ID, which is 2, closing parentheses and doing a semicolon. And here just put player 1. Now player 2, so again db sprite, open parentheses, and then put the load next sprite ID, so 3, comma, and then the equivalent to that on the other side is at 540 and 220. If you see they're at the same y-axis down so they're about level in the middle of the screen. You can play around to see what works best for you but this is the one that works best for me. Now the load ID which is 2 again. Closing parentheses and do a semicolon. And then in the comments just write player 2. OK. We're going to leave ball out because we're going to want it to respawn when we press the space key. So if you want, just write a comment ball equals um, sprite ID 4. So we don't go and use it because we're going to reserve number 4 for our ball. Okay, moving on. Let's go a couple of IDs ahead. So 10. And let's start making our walls. So db sprite. Open parentheses 10, comma, and then if we look at this diagram, you'll see that we want our borders to go around the edges, and because they're five pixels across, we have to indent them. So instead of putting one at 0, 0, 0, 0, and then 640, because we know our window is 640, if we put it there, you'd see that it would go off our screen, so we need to subtract. 5 off it because we know the width is 5 and you'll get 635 and same with the other one 0475 we know our window is 480 
so we want it to be on the screen so we subtract 5 from it because we know the height is 5 on this one so going into our game let's write 0 0 and then this is the one that's going from left to right at the top of the screen so we want this load ID of 4 then just so we don't forget so let's put in the comments line runs at the top left to right you don't have to put this but this is just so you know which ones are which when you come back to look at it next one db sprite open parentheses 11 comma and then this one put it 00, zero again but this is going to be the one that runs from top to bottom on the left hand side so you put 5 closing parentheses and doing a semicolon then in here put line runs top to bottom left hand side because these are comments they don't need to be grammatically correct or anything like that uh, moving on to the next one db sprite open parentheses 12 so the next one along comma and then this one going to our little diagram let's put it at 635 0 so 635 comma 0 comma and then this is going to be the one that goes from top to bottom on the right hand side let's use the load ID of 5 closing parentheses and doing the same colon then in here let's write comment line runs top to bottom right hand side and then last but not least db sprite 13 comma and this is going to be the one that runs along the bottom so 0475 comma and then let's use the let's use the load ID of 4 because this is going to run from left to right at the bottom and this is the top bottom line so 4 closing parentheses and doing the comma and then here let's write line runs left to right at the bottom so if we go and compile this now you'll see that there's the background and the two players but it, but it's not going to be able to move let's go and put movement and collision in so going into player one we'll start off with player one into the declaration let's put another function so int movement open close parentheses and doing a semicolon and then in our d definition let's put int player one two colons and then movement open close parentheses and do two braces with return zero because all functions need to return something like in our .gdk function you can see that it returns but because it's void it doesn't need to return anything going back to player one let's write our first if statement for moving up so if open parentheses and because there's two players we can't just use the left right up and down arrows we need to use some other keys so for player one movement we're going to be using w and s and we can't just write db w key because there isn't a function called that so we need to use the function db key state then in here goes the scan code for the key that you want to test against and I know that W has a scan code of 17 so put 17 in here closing parentheses to 2 equals signs so our if statement at the moment is going to ask if the W key is being compressed and we want to check for collision so we're going to do it all in one so two and symbols and DB sprite collision open parentheses Oh, it appears I've run out of time. Um, next tutorial, I'll just carry on exactly the same from this tutorial. So, go over to the 10th tutorial. See ya.